Let's start off this morning with our scripture reading. Listen to these words from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Jesus says, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. Do you know what we humans aren't very good at? Cutting each other slack. In fact, whenever we get a little full of ourselves and start to think we're somehow qualified to audition for God's job, the only part of the divine gig that we ever audition for is the judgment part. Why is that? What is it about sitting atop that high horse all decked out in our self-righteousness that compels us to be so generous with judgment and so stingy with grace? Well, struggling with this very question, Max Lucado, one of my all-time favorite authors, once wrote, I've never been surprised by God's judgment, but I'm still stunned by His grace. You know, what a great quote, and ain't it the truth? To get a, the full effect of Max's truism, join me in a brief experiment. Of the two, which one is the easiest for you to get your head around, and which one is, well, amazing? Here goes. Number one. God's judgment causing the Egyptians to be swallowed up in the Red Sea, or number two, David the psalmist becoming David the adulterer, but by God's grace becoming David the psalmist again. Now, if you ask me, the Egyptians, well, they had it coming to them. But David beats me. Or how about these two? Number one, God's judgment zapping Sodom and Gomorrah into oblivion with lightning and fire. Or number two, the thief on the cross the guy that was destined for hell one minute and strolling through the gates of paradise the very next. Again, the way I see it, Sodom and Gomorrah, well, they had it coming to them. But the thief on the cross? That's amazing beyond words. Isn't it true that we humans have no trouble comprehending the logic and the appropriateness of judgment, but find ourselves dazed and confused by grace? Why is it that Peter, the guy that denied Christ, ended up becoming Christ's number one advocate and the head of his church. Can you explain that? I can't. What I do know is this. Each and every time someone appealed to God for a second chance, they received it. Check it out for yourself. Search the scriptures. If you do, you'll find not a single exa example of God denying grace to a repentant, wayward soul. You see, God's all about cutting his children slack. So the next time any one of us gets all full of ourselves and starts thinking we have a shot at God's job, perhaps we should do the same. Rather than slinging judgment in all directions, why not come down from the high on high and offer a little grace? If we do, we might just be amazed by the results. And one last experiment. When all this stay-at-home coronavirus stuff is finally over and we can actually gather in the sanctuary for worship, I want you to grab a United Methodist hymnal and look up the hymn entitled Amazing Judgment. Chances are you won't find it. But if you turn to page 378, you'll find an oldie but goodie entitled Amazing Grace. Stay safe. Keep on looking up. Keep on loving one another. God's got this. And we'll see you tomorrow.